That's what, someone needs to create a product that that um, that improves that process, the dumpster diving product uh, or process to go and retrieve stuff that's in at that stage. But that's the name of the product. It needs to be called dumpster diver. Hmm. I, I can I just imagine it now. Create the product just so that I can name it that. You know. There you go, great. Hal. Outstanding. Outlook, Outlook, create something. Dumpster dive. <laughs> Your job. Cool. All right. Uh, let's see. There. So down to forty six. Talking about migration. Yay. All right. And maybe we'll have Joy jump back in in the midst of this. Jesse says, we recently introduced a new internal Office 365 environment. Now we need to transfer a lot of documents from the external environment. We tried to do this manually via synchronization and then move, but almost all documents become corrupt. We think it's due to the length of the URL of the source and destination location. Does anyone have a tip for this? Well, it's hey, interesting. I, well, <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, if if move is the you know the out of the box the native feature for this, it depends about right. what that external environment is. Where I say it depends. Mm. So if it's coming from file shares, if it's coming from an older or just a parallel SharePoint environment, if it's coming from like an an e room Dropbox um, box. That's it ignite kind of any of those other places like where is that coming from depending yeah. on what you're trying to do like most of those scenarios um i think there are a lot of migration tools like sharegate um app point has their fly product a bit titan i know is very popular there's quite a few that are out there quite a few yeah dozens of migration yeah. products but depending on those external environments there are some that are stronger than others um, I, I mean, we, uh, you know, back long time ago when I migration was one of the products that my company sold. And so I was, you know, talked a lot about it and best practices in organizing uh, a popular topic I would write about is that, hey, a migration is an opportunity to clean up first. Don't move your junk. And here's what that looks like. And um, oh, all money. those kinds of things. But but I mean, there are tools, there are you know, vendor solutions that are very specialized with specific outside external environments. So yeah. I don't know, anything you guys And a lot add? of times in that, that migrate from one to the other, if you're doing it sort of manually, um, like how many files or folders are you trying to do in one hit that it's actually corrupting? One, are you doing a really small amount and making sure that they're both locally cached first before you start trying to move it? Because if you're moving it and then it's trying to do the download, download, upload, sometimes if you've got it fully locally cached, so you've got the whole file rather than the kind of the thumbnail versions, depending on where it's coming from or going to. Um, yeah, it can make a difference when you when they're starting to. Because I've had many an organisation do the get their staff to do the manual process from one to the other and not had problems. Um, I mean, huge organisation, one hundred and fourteen thousand people organisations, and they've done their own manual moves from uh, shared drives, for example, over to SharePoint with no problems. So. You've yeah. got to wonder, well, where is it coming from? It must be where it's coming from, potentially, that it's getting that, you know, getting that corruption. So, you know, as you said, it depends. You know, what what is it? Where is it coming from? And I exactly. do know that, they're, you know, if it's coming from the likes of, if you, as you said, Dropbox or, you know, other cloud solutions, there are, there are um, provide, like there's solutions that don't actually cost on some of those, depends on how much data you've got. If you've got a mass amount of data, then you're up for third-party solutions is my understanding okay. from all of the programs I've been on. And, but then that also depends on whether it's a centralized migration, meaning there's is an admin or multiple admins that are doing those moves, or to your yeah. point, you're having your end users actually yeah. move those pieces across um, yeah. from those environments. So yeah, it's, you're right, because there are, um, I mean, more and more of these other external solutions also have export mechanisms. And there we have Joy talking about migration, dro dropping in. Welcome back as we talk about migration. Uh, but a lot of those other products have uh, the ability to 
uh, uh, to export or you know have other integrations into SharePoint. Um, so there there could be uh, you know other options there depending on that source for that migration. Yeah. Yeah. Joy, would you concur? Absolutely. Everything this panel of experts says is 100% spot on. And I presume we've covered the basis of the the all the good tools that are out there for migrations. Right. Yeah, it's Purpose again built. not not knowing what the source error is. I mean, there could be right. different recommendations for that. Like there was like I would point a lot of people towards either AppPoint or ShareGate for migrations. Yep. Um, I, like BitTitan, I don't think was around you know, back then. Um, but when it was certain source sites, I would point them over to Metalogix, now Quest, um, because mm -hmm. they had other, like they had like an e-room migration solution that was really strong. Yeah. Um, yeah. They had, I believe, the better file share migration solution. It was really flexible and mm -hmm. dynamic. Mm -hmm. So you could actually reorganize as part of the migration and migrate it over into like all, whatever the complexity is. So, yeah. And that's, you yeah. said a very important thing too, when, when customers are uh, Microsoft M365 are thinking about migrating, reorganizing in this modern age is a very important thing to take into mind too. You're not just going to new containers or new sites, but flatten those out. Don't just bring that old stuff over. Yeah. You want, yeah, that that's the thing. You don't want to take your old, you know, N-level folder structure, that complexity. Nope. You want to, uh, you know, leverage, understand the architecture of the new environment and what yep. its strengths are. And you're right, flatten that Flatten that out. Have we said the magic word yet? Which one, please? No. Oh. <laughs> if we want to be co-pilot ready. Oh, no. We, uh, we yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Just had had to use the, the co pilot word had where to. we're talking had SharePoint. But, yeah. Well, I mean, it is saying they think it's the URL is potentially too long and causing the corruption. So, and that's if that's the deep. case, then start cleaning up your folders. I mean, do it yep. now. And it's a good opportunity to do it to be co pilot ready. You're absolutely right. So, let yeah. alone in teams, you really don't want to go more than three folders deep. The complexity uh -huh. and the issues that come with it, with the URL, that, you know, that crumb, crumb <laughs> path, you know, it just goes, oh, oh yeah, it's too much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if, if if you're breaking your URL link, that means, Chris, exactly. You've got too many folders going too deep. Yeah. You can't find the content. It just can't yeah. get to it. Yeah. It's I see far. it with the, the name, the name of this, and then the name, and then the name, and then the name, and then you get to the file, uh -huh. and then it's another long name, and you go, guys, come on. Yes. Yeah. Mm. It's, met, metadata should be your friend. Metadata, not folders. Mm. 100%. Mm. 100%. Up. Unless it's a security need, then break those babies out into other libraries, other sites, and build that architecture according to permissions.